A Fed and a hacker walk on the stage. <laughs> and uh, since it's a little too early for beer, I guess we'll just have to talk about supply chain. I think so. So the message today is four fun words that are four fun letters that are fun to say. SBOM is coming, and we're going to need your help uh, to make it a reality. And so one of the core questions is, hey, first of all, what is this key thing that you keep saying? SBOM is a software bill of materials. Uh, should we get a little more detail about that? Is that enough? Are we done? I think we're done on this part, yeah. We, so, software bill of materials. What is an SBOM? Like, if we have a definition up here, this is like an official definition, but like, what, what actually is an SBOM, like, when, in, in words? Well, yes, so we can give you, this is the official US government definition that some of us had a hand in writing, but if we want to get a little more detail, it's actually not that complicated. It's the dependency graph of your software. So Acne application in turn depends on Bingo Buffer and Bob's browser, which in turn depends on Carol's compression engine. For each of this data, we don't need that much information. Uh, it's gonna be very helpful to have more, and we're gonna talk in a little bit about some of the great tools that we have to do this, but uh, we need just some of the basics so that you can track what's going on in your, in your project. So. so how do we ask Bob then? The good news is that uh, we have some projects today. We have some standards that can convey this data. Now, it would be lovely when we set out, we said, hey, we don't want to invent anything new. Let's use what's already out there. So that was, the good news is that there was at least one approach to do this today. Bad news is that there's more than one. But that's OK, because they're both amazing projects. Many of you have been involved in SPDX, which comes out of Linux Foundation. Uh, it actually goes back uh, over a decade. Uh, people have been working on it to capture license information. And the great news is that it was recently announced that it's an ISO standard. And some of you who work in large global companies know how important it is for something to be an international standard. Cycle Index is newer, comes out of the OWASP world. It's sort of dev focused, it's security focused. Both of them are great. So should we let the, lock them in a room and let them fight? Let one emerge? No. What we want to do is sort of help them harmonize and make sure that we can translate between them. And the value here is the core basics, what you need to make this a reality, actually is something that can happen either, in either of them. And you know what computers are really good at? I have no idea. I really don't. <laughs> computers are really good at taking structured data and moving it around. And that's really what our vision here is. Let's take the data, let's make it structured, and let's move it around. So we're not here just to tell you all about this new technology. This is not a technical talk because I'm a really bad engineer. We're here to convince you that this is coming. Why, do we, why are we arguing that this is coming? So if you take a look at what SBOM is, and we have a large number of attacks that have gone on, that we've had the supply chain has been attacked, we have issues around where we, we don't often know what's inside of our infrastructures, and we're running this really important, uh, this really important infrastructure throughout the, throughout the world. And so, we want to be able to get an understanding of that, and once we get that understanding, we can actually start to do something in order to improve the overall security posture of the systems that we come to rely on for, uh, for our physical supply chains, for our power, and, and similar, similar things. So, is there anyone here who thinks that supply chain is not yet an issue? Should we sort of revisit some of the great points that Luke talked about, about how you know, supply chain is now a concern? One of the points that Luke made that I really liked is that this isn't just any one project's concern. This isn't any one company's concern. This isn't any one country's concern. There are national security issues, but really this is a global issue that we need to be tracking. So what is a supply chain? Well, in a nutshell, if you take a look at our graph, uh, this is the beginning of a supply chain. It's, it's a dependency, it's sort of a dependency graph. And if we, we can use an example from physical. So if you look at vehicles, very often you may have recalls for an airbag or some other component. They know where that airbag came from, where it went, which cars it went into, uh, often down to the VIN number. And so this is a very important example of, of a supply chain. Now, if you look on the far end, there is this trusted and untrusted 
uh, slider that's on there. So the most trusted items tend to come from the vendor itself or some entity that uh, has established that trust well, with you. Uh, you have your third party things you bring in that you have to validate. Uh, at the far other end of, this, of the spectrum, you have a counterfeiter of stolen items, which you're not able to establish that, uh, that provenance with, and you have no idea if it's gonna break on you, or if it's gonna report back information on you. We can also tie this into software. So same, same concept, we have various components, we have software that ends up in those components that if it ends up leading into a product. And again, we have this trust slider that's on there of things that like, oh, we wrote it ourselves, so we know what it does, all the way down to the far other end of the spectrum, which is poison. And please don't think of this as like a linear slider. The actual trust graph itself is way more complex than this. There's a lot of input to go into whether to decide whether you should trust something or not. But we have this concept that at the very end is to, we draw a line somewhere to say, this is things that we trust and bring into our infrastructure. These are things that we don't tr quite trust, but with some additional controls, maybe we can, down to, we don't want to touch this thing with a 100 foot pole. And by the way, one of the challenges of what makes security particularly fun and exciting is things we used to trust. We wake up and say, you know, maybe we can't trust this anymore. And that's the model here of having transparency is allowing you to react when that becomes the case. So the other reason we want you to pay attention to it is because people are going to start asking you for SBOMs and they're gonna start asking you sooner. So we say, people, what do we mean? Um, well, so first and perhaps most important for those of you who work for companies is customers. Uh, today, there's a couple of major hospitals that are already saying, if you're going to sell me a medical device, the blinking box that's keeping humans alive, I need to know what's in it before I put it on my network. This is something that we're starting to see now. They may not prevent you from buying it if it contains out-of-date software or vulnerable software, but it's gonna delay it. One of the largest banks in America, part of their security team has been asking for SBOMs for years. Now, this was even before we started to standardize the tech. They didn't care how you gave them the SBOM. You could fax it to them. Uh -huh. But if you couldn't produce an SBOM, that told the security team, a great deal about the quality of your product. And they knew from experience that total cost of ownership of your product was gonna be much higher than what they would expect. And so they were gonna take five to 10% off the asking price, off your product before you could even sell to them. So this is not just about security, it's about dollars and cents. And of course, this is important for the things in life that really are critical to our infrastructure, like critical infrastructure. The Edison Electric Institute, which is a trade association of the largest utilities in America, has said already, before you buy something, you should ask for a bill of materials. So this is coming. The other thing is governments get a government. Hi, I'm from the US government. I'm here to help. <laughs> uh, the White House has publicly said that everything the US government buys going to have to have a software bill of materials. I'll give you guys a hint. The US government buys an awful lot of things. Uh, so this is going to be slowly evolving and becoming bigger. We've defined under this executive order the minimum model of this. As we move forward, this is going to be even more ambitious because uh, we're going to see that some of the basics that we know how to do are great, some of the advanced side of supply chain management in SBOM that you are all working on today that we'll talk about. So a quick question, is it only software that the government buys or is this actually gonna extend out to others as well? Well, that's the joy of marketing, right? This is the, the policy tool that the community has had is to say, hey, this is going to be something that's important. And so most companies aren't going to have two versions of a product. Most open source projects aren't going to say, uh, let's have two versions, one which we care about supply chain and the other one which we don't. Which one would you like? I think we're going to want that. So, um, also, line of governments, the FDA, which regulates medical devices, has publicly said, yeah, you're going to need to have this level of transparency in your supply chain so that we can share this. But again, looking forward, it's one thing to talk about the blinking box that's keeping a human alive. But almost all of those new devices that are being sold today are controlled, not locally, 
but in the cloud. And some of you are working on those very applications that are going to be part of that in the future. Okay. So what, what can the people in the room do? What can the nice people do? Well, I mean, we could all hide and pretend it doesn't exist, but I don't recommend that. Um, so things that we can do is we start with building SBOMs. So it, it, it sounds simpler than it actually is because you're talking about build systems. You heard in the previous uh, keynote with, uh, with Steven about how complex that entire process is. But if you, if, if you have something that's difficult and you do it often, you get better at it. So right now we're terrible at producing SBOMs, and so we start producing them. Then we can start to consume them internally. So this actually goes back to, let's see if I can give a good example and tie it back to uh, a previous experience. So uh, around eight or nine years ago, uh, we were going around and talking about Docker and like this brand new thing nobody had ever heard of and we're trying to convince people to make use of it. And what we worked out was people were not going to put it into production, and they just weren't going to do it. And we focused on, well, we know we're not going to put it in production, but how about you put it in your build systems? And as the build system runs it over and over and over again, over time they, see, they, they were able to start depending on the outputs of that into the other parts of their system. And once they started consuming that, then it just really took off. So start building your SBOMs internally and start using them for, for that purpose. Um, and then that becomes the inputs to your other process, your zero trust process. It becomes the input towards your reliability. You're able to start run analytics on the things that you, that you add into it to try to work out reliability. And over time, that also gives you the ability to tie in to, to further things as well, like eventually there'll be CVE databases that you can then cross-link to your, to your system. So you can work out uh, a new CVE comes out, have you been affected, even if it was statically compiled in and your, and your image uh, scanners can't pick it up because we know what's inside of it. The goal isn't to create the data for its own sake. We all have enough data. The goal is to have this data and start to map to things that we care about. What's the vulnerability information? What's the license information? What's the risk? How can we make sure that we're using upstream projects that have a great maintenance team rather than, you know, hey, maybe there's only one person and that person has decided to play the ukulele instead of maintaining their project. Yeah, and we, we also, something that's important about SBOMs is that SBOMs are also, they're static elements. They're not designed to be dynamic things. And so when we start to ingest them into our systems, the SBOM will tell us what's inside of the package, but it's only a part of the story. We have other systems. As we're tying into other systems, we have projects like SIGSTORE, which we can use to work out where, where did the SBOM itself come from, because it doesn't do any good to say, yeah, the SBOM says this, but you didn't actually check the provenance of the SBOM itself. We have processes like, we have systems like Intoto, where Intoto allows us to verify something about the process of the system. Uh, systems like Spiffy, which allow us to then tie that to, you know, what build system actually built this particular system in a point of, in a point of time. Uh, several other tools as well that are coming out about the over pro uh, overall process. So you're seeing these come out of OpenSSF. You have like projects like Salsa. Uh, there's a lot of energy, a lot of a lot of focus that's being put on here. And so, it, if this is an area that you're interested in, like, they definitely definitely get involved. And as we said, this is part of a delightful ecosystem. And one of the lovely things about talking to this community is you guys inherently get the idea of an ecosystem. Right? There isn't going to be one thing that's going to help manage it. If you want to learn more about some of those projects uh, that Frederick mentioned, uh, I think the videos from Monday's supply chain workshop are going to be posted. You'll see, find out all of these great tools that are available, and they need your help. So SBOM is not a unique thing. It is part of a complete breakfast. And everyone has their own favorite breakfast. Right? This is one of my favorite breakfasts. This is a picture from a guest house in the Caucasus Mountains in the middle of Georgia. But what you need to manage your risk and how to think about your supply chain is going to vary, but we want to make sure that you can sort of add it to the table that you want. So, um, tying up here, what we want to do is let you know how to get involved. And by the way, this is a fun example of what happens when you don't get your slides to the organizers in an appropriate time, uh, because we've been having some fun on uh, what slide is coming next. Uh, so there are some great resources out there that Frederick has started to collect on his website. Can you rattle off the URL? Yeah, well, if, so there's a website. It's really simple. It's a ZT, like Zeta 
theta, like or, or like or I should say like zero trust. So zt.dev, D-E-V. And there is a link in there that points to a, uh, to a uh, list of various projects. The actual list itself is on GitHub as well. So you, if, you, if you do a pull request, if your project is not listed in there and there's many gaps, uh, feel free to add it on there and we'll make sure that it gets out to, to you as well. And if you'd like to get involved in the international process, please reach out to me directly. In December, we're going to be having the s Bamarama. I have official permission from my leadership to call it that. I'm very excited. Um, and this is something that really is going to cover the domain of all software. That means a lot of private companies involved, but we absolutely need folks from the open source community and the cloud native community to be involved in helping make sure that what we're doing meets the needs of this community. So please hashtag SBOM on Twitter to join the conversation. There are a lot of great projects out there. And if this is interesting to you, I'm more than happy to talk uh, over the next few weeks. Yeah, and come find me for the QR code if, you, if you're having trouble finding it. I will produce the QR code for you, and then you can scan it. Great. Thanks so much for your time. Cheers.